And what? No three, two, one. <laughs> you don't get three, two, one. Today. I didn't get a three, two, one. Instead, you get a view of me drinking my tea. <laughs> Hi, guys. How are you today? I hope everybody is uh, safe and well. Um, we do have one thing I got to say today. Um, one of our regulars and and part of our uh, membership group is Robin Richer, Robin Ruscha. Um Sadly, she lost her mom yesterday, so she won't be joining us today. So if you've got a few minutes, pop over to uh, Facebook or on the YouTube channel and send Robin your best wishes and our condolences go to her and her family. So Robin, we are thinking of you today and you will be missed. Um, what else? Today, our shout out today is to a, a tremendous friend of mine, uh, a lady that I've had the absolute joy of working with on uh, numerous occasions. And uh, she has a, a fabulous little company. Actually, she's got two fabulous little companies <laughs> that aren't so little anymore, uh, is Patricia Rawlinson. She is a, an old and, and well-loved friend. And uh, the shout out for today goes out to Creative Arts Lifestyle. Uh, I love her website. She's got some great surfaces, some really great stencils, which is her other company, R12 Stencils. Um, I, and I'm a big fan of both. Uh, so if you get a chance, um, please go and check out uh, creativeartslifestyle.com. It's a great website. And uh, she has the great taste of selling some of my patterns. So uh, go and check them out. They usually have uh, an artist of the week or an artist of the month. Um, type thing like a featured artist and then they put all of their patterns and whatnot on sale so you can check it out and uh, while you're at it go and have a look at some amazing new stencils that she's created tons of really cool stuff on that website and uh, so yeah that's my shout out for the week and if patty if you happen to see this mwah, love you sweetie hope you're doing really well so uh, that covers my shout out of the week um, what else did we want to talk about today? Uh, the palettes? The palettes. I was so excited about that. Um, if you might have noticed on the YouTube channel, um, there's a bunch of people. They've got a little artist palette next to their name. They are all members of my membership group, and they have all been with me for the whole year. And our full year anniversary was last weekend. It was actually, yeah, last weekend, last Saturday. And so we had... Um, a class on the Tuesday prior to that and then um, so they've done a full year with me so if you notice they've got the little palette next to it if you are a member that's what's gonna happen when you hit the one-year mark you're gonna get that great little thing when you hit the six-month mark you get a pin an, a wonderful little membership pin in the mail and we sent out some more this week we seem to be sending them all out. We're almost out of them again. Again. So we have to send out some more. Uh, so I'm really excited about that. But I wanted to say a big thank you to all of you that have that little art palette. And to all of you that have the gold handled brushes and, and whatever color your brush is. Thanks so much for joining us. We have so much fun with the membership group. Uh, lots of challenges. Lots of great projects. And then, of course, they get the class every month. And they're just an amazing group of people incredibly talented lots of fun and amazing so yeah. Edward, thanks very much shenanigans already really yeah it's a little early for wine isn't it yeah <laughs> uh, apparently the word of the day is uh will i will sip coffee i will sip co oh he's the sipping word of the day, oh, okay sip coffee okay so he's he hasn't cracked open the wine yet okay good <laughs> i was gonna Nothing say wrong with day drinking no it just you can't get a whole lot of painting done though no no but um what was there was something else any happy mail did i oh i did have happy mail <laughs> you can't show the t-shirt no i can't show the t-shirt <laughs> i do love my t-shirt though um you're welcome uh, thank you <laughs> but it is not not youtube friendly no we would lose our rating <laughs> um i got happy mail this week I have been really excited about this. Of course, I blame this entirely on my pal Deb. Um, this is P.H. Martin's liquid acrylic. Um, I don't know if the camera can see it or not. It obviously can. Now we can um, show it to the top down later. The top down later. But um, I bought a set of these uh, P Dr. P.H. Martin uh, liquid acrylics, they're called. Essentially, they're an acrylic ink. The colors are incredible. And I, it's entirely Deb's fault. I'm going to blame it entirely on her. So if anybody asks, <laughs> that's that's why I have yet again um, Amazoned 
<laughs> is because of Deb. So it, fabulous colors. I'm really excited about playing with these. Um, the colors are incredibly vibrant. You do have to give them a shake, but look at that. Beautiful, beautiful colors. Um, and then thanks to my great pal, um, Sheila Landry, um, she gifted me with a beautiful uh, ceramic palette. So I'm going to be playing with my ceramic palette and these amazing liquid acrylics. I can't wait to play with those. So that was my happy mail this week. I had tons of that. And then, of course, I got my Shane order with all my paper crafting stuff. Yeah, of course. More paper yeah. stuff. Oh, and the other thing that arrived this week was uh, the prizes for the membership group. Ah, yes. For, uh, for the month of June. We're celebrating all month for the one year. And so the uh, members in the membership group, some of the prizes that we have this week are uh, Prismacolor Verithin pencil sets. Um, we have a gorgeous stamp uh, wax seal stamp set which has everything that you need in it we have a gorgeous set of that and then we have um a Winsor newton watercolor sets so every week for the month of june um starting last wednesday diane Burtsfield was the first winner she won a set of ferris and pencils um every week on the wednesday we're going to be drawing a name from the membership group and uh, they're going to win one of those great prizes yeah and then for today's giveaways uh, we also have something really awesome. We have a gorgeous Dynasty Stencil Pro stencil brush and a set of Tombow's Professional drawing pencils. Yeah. Plus some other little goodies that we like to throw in. Schwag. So, we, yeah, we have swag in there, too. So we have three of those things to give away this week for today. So we have lots of fun stuff. Ooh, we might have a word of the day. Oh, oh, who is it? Uh... Apparently, it should be gorgeous. Gorgeous? Gorgeous. Oh, it's gorgeous. I've been using that word a lot lately. <laughs> <laughs> I use it to describe Sheila's lion. Oh, my God. That was gorgeous. There you go, Edward. Have fun. He's going to be overly caffeinated by the time we're done with him. He might need a pot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Probably. So today, we are going to paint. Uh, it's an old pattern, this one. Um, Touch of Asia originally i i thought it was 2011 but it turns out it was 2008 when i originally published this one um and i've i've had actually several emails people asking me to do a live using this pattern what yeah so i decided um that it might be a good idea to do it because i'm kind of tossing that idea around for a little while and then uh, i sat down and read through the pattern and i went yeah no this desperately needs to be updated <laughs> if i'm going to do a live so i had to uh, upgrade the line drawings a little bit because they needed to be cleaned up and um, it needed new step by step so i just repainted the whole thing and then I did uh, did my piece on a 6x14. However, the original piece is painted on a 12x24. So I made the line drawings so that you can simply enlarge them by 75% and then they'll fit on the 12x24. So, but the technique does not change. Everything else remains the same. So I think this will be a fun one. It is not a difficult paint. Don't panic. I know it looks perhaps looks a little intimidating. It really isn't. It's not a difficult piece to paint. Um, but it uses some very simple techniques, some very simple design elements. I didn't overthink this one, didn't go too far with it. Um, just simplified things and then used a little flash of gold just to give it a little punch and a little bit of interest. So we are going to paint touch of Asia. I love this piece. I always have. I've loved the original. I've, I've painted it many, many times. I've taught it only a couple of times, I think. Uh, but I thought with, uh, you know, people contacting me and asking me if I would teach this in a live, um, that it, let's give it a go. So this is what we're working on today. Woo. It's a fun one. It's a fun one. Yeah. Oh my goodness. As everybody is in here. Janet Roach and Phyllis Griffey. Hi, Phyllis. Hope you're doing well, dear. All right. So, yeah, if you guys are ready to get started. Nothing else? Nothing else. Nothing else. Go. Okay, there yep. we go. <laughs> For a change. My <laughs> mouth is not running over today. <laughs> I did, however, remember to put my DecoArt apron on. Since I, I use everything DecoArt, it was a good idea. 
and uh, you know <laughs> summer's coming i think renee is my spirit animal <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, mine too. <laughs> yeah, that's a new one. Never been defined as a, a spirit animal. That's spirit a good spirit animal. <laughs> oh, that's rich. So, um, I've got my stuff here. So, I this is the line drawing here. I, I had originally laid this out for this piece for this uh, six by fourteen. Uh, so, just enlarging it by 75% will give you the size that you need for the uh, 12 by 24. So just so that you know it can be done on either or. So the piece that we're working on, we're working with a texture medium. You can use gesso for this portion, which is just developing all of this great texture in the background. Um, it is not a heavy texture. We don't want to use a ton of it for a couple of reasons. One, it's not necessary. And two, it'll take forever to dry if you put too much on. So we're just working with thin overlapping layers. Apparently I photobombed you. You photobombed well, me? I went to close the door. Oh, okay. So everybody <laughs> saw me. Gasp. Gasp. So I just wanted to show you the technique for putting this texture medium on for your background. Now I'm using, um, I've got a little bit of texture paste here. I'm looking to see if I had some gesso. Gesso. They're talking about the, uh, the Nescafe. What is it? Ice, iced I, coffee. Yeah. The, the Java. Oh, that iced Java. Oh my God. Yeah, apparently you told Karen about it. Yum. Yeah, so she's addicted. Oh, yeah. It's just, <laughs> oh, yum. Not really something that I would ordinarily buy. Yeah. But. Um, Yummy? It just looked, I don't know. So I thought, ooh, I want to try that. Oh, my gosh. I love anything coffee. Oh. Uh, uh, well, I I'm not a fan of cold brew. Yeah. I, um. I stopped drinking coffee in the middle of the pandemic and started drinking tea. I have the odd decaf every once in a while, but um, yeah, I got a bottle of this iced Java stuff from Nescafe and oh my gosh, I've never had so much milk in my life. Is there sugar in it? Yes, there is, but it's only 40 calories a, tea a tablespoon and it's about the same as a teaspoon of sugar. A teaspoon of sugar. Um, and it makes a full cup of that. So a, one tablespoon to a cup of milk. Pour that over ice. Oh, Bob's your uncle. Sally's your aunt. It's some good. <laughs> Very refreshing. And don't let your East Coast show it all. <laughs> <laughs> Might have some good to your ribs now, huh? <laughs> Nine grams of sugar in it. Yep. Is that per serving or is that for the whole battle? No, that's... Battle. 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 Is it uh, a powder? Uh, no, it's a liquid. Uh, well, it's a liquid. It's a liquid. It's, it was funny because it was on a display with all of the syrups, like the caramel syrup and the... Oh, yeah, because those syrups are meant to go with it. Well, no, I'm talking about the stuff you put on ice cream. Yeah. Like oh, the chocolate. Really? Like, that's where they had it, which I struck me as kind of odd. Mm. But um, when I picked it up, I went... Okay, that's different. And then when I read the label, I went, oh, this isn't even in the right spot. But so I've got. Um, it's a good summer coffee. It, very, very refreshing. So I've got a little bit of, um, I've got crackle paste here, but you could use uh, texture paste. You can use gesso. So essentially, you're just going to put on very thin little patches and I do mean thin just barely enough on that surface I am not putting on a ton of stuff Ooh. oh Patrick's here hi Patrick apparently he only drinks coffee at school <laughs> today was soy milk with chocolate and freshly made crepes oh to be ready for the time with you Ooh. okay rub it in <laughs> Yeah. 
freshly made crepes. Patrick, I have uh, another little thing I've got to send out to you. Uh oh. Well, he's he's been just wonderful about um, some of the patterns that I do. He's been sending me the translations that he does. So I. Uh... There's a dog on the move. Give me a second. <laughs> There we go. So this is essentially all you're going to do is you're going to put very thin overlapping patches onto your surface. Now, as I said, you can do this with gesso, you can do this with um, a texture paste, and you can do this with the crackle paste like I did here. Um, any kind of texture, meaning even modeling paste will work. So this is uh, just the texture paste. And again, just thin overlapping patches like so. Super thin. They do not need to be heavy. And the reason we use that thin overlapping pattern is that it creates um, a very subtle and soft texture. It doesn't look so subtle once we get color on it. It gives us a lot of texture visually, but not a lot from a tactile standpoint. So which you don't really want. It's hard to paint on something that's rough. So we're just using very thin overlapping patches like so. And then because we're working with an acrylic, I mean, if, if you've got drywall patch at home, use some of that. It, it will work. It will do exactly what we want it to do. And then you're just going to dry it. Now, if you've got all afternoon, just leave it off to the side and let it dry. Or you can force it with a hair dryer or one of these uh, heat tools. And then once it's completely dry, like not just dry to the touch, but completely dry, you can take a sanding sponge and just give it a light sand just to take off any little loose bits, if there are any. And then um, you're going to give it two coats of gesso or as I did I just used two coats of uh, warm white just so that I have a uniform surface to work on so this actually works really really well I know it looks messy it does not look perfect it doesn't need to be but once you have one color on top of this all of this texture this smooth areas in the background becomes part of that texture so it doesn't look patchy looks like one irregular surface so uh oh what patrick's is sending you a little happy mail uh oh <laughs> uh oh <laughs> he just needs time to go to the post office uh, no worries <laughs> he must be getting ready for summer vacation no kidding soon. it's almost holidays mm. it's almost summer holidays out in europe i don't know what it's like in europe though with um because I know when I was living in Germany, school went all year round. They just had a break. Yeah. So I don't know how they do it in, in France. but So I don't know if this shows up on camera or not. Um, but there is a very subtle texture on there. And that is going to help develop our background. And now we're going to use a fun technique. I'm going to take a shop towel. And uh, I'm going to tear it into quarters. I'm sorry, gotta get this thing off. There, it was, that thing is very restrictive. Which is probably the point, but <laughs> it's driving me nuts, so. Okay, so I have a uh, shop towel. I've torn it into quarters and I'm going to use two of those quarters. I'm going to crumple one up, come so. And I'm going to tuck it inside one of the others. High-tech applicator. I'm making a high-tech applicator. And I'm going to get this wet with just some clean water. And I just squeezed out the excess. I want it wet, but I don't want it dripping. And I'm going to pick up a little bit of that Josonia's Fast Drying Glaze. So this is what's going to move the color around on this surface. So high-tech applicator. Now the color I chose for this background, originally I had used an antique gold. I wanted something a bit more vibrant. Push it forward a little bit. There you go. And then um, this is saffron yellow. This is our first color. It's going to be very in your face. 
It is um, a very in-your-face yellow. And I love this yellow. So I'm going to pick up a generous amount. And let me Patrick move says this. one more month before summer holidays. Okay, so they start in July. So I'm going to take that yellow and I'm going to apply that to my surface in a circular fashion, like so. And I change directions frequently because we're on a textured surface. If I don't change directions, we're going to see a lot of little white pockets and I don't want that. But you want the white to show through a bit? It will just by nature of how we put it on. Ah. So, and as soon as the color starts to drag or if it doesn't seem like I'm getting a lot of color on there, I pick up some more. We want to get that color down into the lowest areas of that texture. And you'll note I have not gotten this wet again. I don't really need it to. But if you find the color is dragging, if it's drying out, then just dip that back into your glaze and pick up a little more color. So right away with this one coat, and I love this yellow. Deb, uh, Deb Bloomfield says, uh, Hubs took me out someplace expensive for our anniversary. Nice. Nice. The gas station. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sadly. Now, what I love about this is that if I find my yellow is too soft, I can just go back in and put a little bit more in. If I really want all of that texture to stand up, I'm going to show you a little trick. So I've got lots of color in there. And you, now you can see all of that texture showing up. I'm going to take my high-tech applicator and I'm going to turn it inside out. Which means that the little piece that was inside is now going to be on the outside. And the outside is now going to be on the inside. And this one's a little more wet. So now I can gently, very gently, I might add, just in a circular fashion, wash over top. Now I'm just hitting the high point of this texture with this. And so it's creating a bit more contrast. So you can see it's actually pulling a little color off that texture and it creates the contrast that we need to make that texture pop. Now I used very thin, very, very thin layers of that gesso or texture medium or whatever you want to use. Thin overlapping and look at all the texture that creates. Oodles of it. I got two questions for you. Shoot. Uh, what color could we substitute for saffron yellow? Just choose a nice bright yellow. Nice like sunny bright day. yellow. Like on a sunny day might be a little too soft. It's very a lot of white in it. You need something with some punch. Um, oh, yellow yeah. light. <laughs> you know, go to a nice bright yellow. Are we going to be using any neons? No, we are not. Why not? I like the I are, like the, however, I like the neons. I know you do. <laughs> um, I'm using a little bit of canyon orange for this. Yeah, and the other question is: Would this work well with the membership project? Yes. You could do it. Absolutely. Have a textured background. Mm -hmm. That would look good. Mm -hmm. So I'm using the same applicator that I used last time. I'm just going to pick up a little more glaze. And you want to make sure that this part is dry. So I'm just going to. Now the thing about this, if this is not dry and you try to put color, more color over top of it, um, you'll end up taking more color off than you put on because the surface gets very saturated. So I'm going to make sure that this is well dry. Just so that I'm not fighting against it. And I'm going to start in the lower left corner 
with that high tech applicator. And this time I'm going to use a little bit of Canyon Orange. And I know that this is scary, <laughs> but um, the nice part about this is when you put that darker value on, look what happens to that texture. It just jumps up. And you do not have to get all of this color in in one go. And you'll notice that the color blends out really nicely. Now, I like to bring that orange color out about one third of the way. I want lots of orange right here because this is where that floral is going to start. So I want something that's going to give it great contrast. I want that punch, which pulls the eye right there. So I'm going to, again, more orange. And I'm going to pull that color out a little further. So each time I put a coat of this orange on, it just goes a little bit further. And look at how this texture pops. You've got to love that. And I'm going to dry it and I'm going to do it again because I want that punch of orange. <laughs> so I was just scrolling through the chat here. Okay. Turns out a certain somebody has a birthday either coming up or has already passed. Who did? Patrick. Yes, Patrick's birthday was earlier in the week. Who was it? Yeah. Well, happy birthday, Patrick. And of course, Linda Franco is getting people talking. <laughs> I got to tell you, Linda Franco is just an absolute go-getter every morning when i check the group uh the group facebook page she's got a bright good morning she's always got information to pass on she's just she's absolutely remarkable and can't thank her enough because she really does take a huge load off my shoulders a lot of the time so um linda i hope you know how much we appreciate you so i've got look at all that orange i love it I want to balance this by pulling a little bit of that same color up into this upper right corner. When it's upside right, it's the upper right. <laughs> right now it's upside down. So I'm just pulling a little of that orange in there and just blending it out. So now we have this vibrant yellow through here, this great rich orange in this corner, and then it's reflected in this corner. So it gives us nice visu visual balance already. The great part about this technique is that you can let this dry. And if at any time you want to put more color in, because I'm thinking I need more orange. I'm really partial to this orange. And I love this technique. I love this type of background. It's rich. It's got lots of movement in it. So I'm just pulling a little more orange. Oh, yummy. Mm -hmm. Such a yummy color. With that saffron as the base, and then you put that gorgeous canyon orange over top of it. It's just, oh, so hot. It looks good. It does look good. Love this orange. So this, I love this little bit here. Just balances things really, really nicely. I'm going to set that aside. And we're going to dry this little bit. Do uh, you ever paint on glass? I am. I do from time to time. I'm not a fan. <laughs> <laughs> That's just me. I, I find glass very frustrating to paint on. Um, I watch some artists. Um, a couple come to mind. But I watch Sandy do stuff on glass. And I'm just blown away she makes it look so easy i find glass a very frustrating surface to paint on but that's just me that has more to do with me and less to do with the surface mm -hmm. <laughs> i'm a control freak not being able to control any of that just frustrates me so i have my high-tech applicator i'm still using the same one i'm going to pick up a little more glaze and then i have a little bit of asphaltum surprise I use asphaltum for a lot of things but um, in this particular case 
And this part is going to be very scary, but it's okay. Everything will be all right. <laughs> I'm going to just put a little of it at the edges of my surface, like so. I don't want a ton of it. I just want a little bit on the edges just to age this slightly. I just like how it looks. That's, it's a me thing. And I go into my corners a little bit. I like it a little darker in the corners. The great thing about using this high-tech applicator for this is that if at any time you feel you've overdone it, like right about now, I can take that, just the damp corner of it, and I can pull some of that color off. So I have an, a level of control. And I wanted this to have sort of an aged look, but I don't want it to look dark and dirty either. So I can take my little clean applicator, find a clean spot like that, and I can blend that edge. So if I find it's looking a little heavy handed, I can just pull some of that off. And it's a nice light touch. You're washing the baby's face, not scrubbing the kitchen floor. Just Did like you get so. get hit by the storm in Canada? No. You know, it's uh, the bulk of that missed us, thank heavens. Uh, Tracy, have you tried Voltaren cream? Voltaren? Yes. Doesn't work for me. And I already have a prescription grade um, version of that. So and I, it doesn't help. <laughs> it doesn't seem to do much. Um, I've been using um, A535 has an absolutely awesome one for arthritis and muscle pain, and I've been using that, and I've pretty good results. I just realized the originals on the other side of that. <laughs> I just realized you that. You just got that one? Yeah. Ta -da! Ta -da! <laughs> Recycle. Yeah. Recycle, reuse. Um, so I'm going to dry that. I'm happy with with this. If I want to darken it some more at another time or a little later on, I can do that. I can adjust this as I go, which is one of the reasons I like doing it this way. <laughs> Somebody said uh, you're uh, Subron. Said your motto should be no day without Ashvaltum. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody said to me the other day if Deco were ever discontinued that, there'd be hell to pay. You have no idea. Uh, what can you use instead of that brown? I'm guessing they meant. The oh, the Ashvaltum. Um, Ashvaltum is one of those colors. It's not one that is easily replaced. You can use burnt umber. Um, you're going to have to use it in very small quantities because it can get overworked very, very quickly. And it has a tendency to subdue colors a lot. The asphaltum doesn't do that because it's actually more of a yellow than a brown. And it's very transparent. Whereas the burnt umber is going to be a bit more opaque. But if you're just going to age the edges slightly, then yes, you can use the burnt umber. Um, just use it sparingly. That's all I'll say. Okay, so now we're going to talk about tracing designs on because yep. um, Deb is caffeinated in here. Oh, good. How's, Hi, how's the little one? <laughs> how's the little puppy? Daisy. Daisy. She's some stinking cute. She giving you grief? <laughs> Deb says she's fine when she's not trying to eat people. Oh, yeah, you got to watch out for those little ones. Yeah. <laughs> We get uh, big dog, small dog syndrome, <laughs> little dog syndrome, little dog syndrome. So I took my heat gun to this because I want this um, glaze. Now, when we're doing this, there is a lot of liquid going into and onto all of that paint. So there's a fair amount of moisture going on it. So what happens is, is this surface gets very soft. And when it's soft and fresh it takes quite a while for it to dry so 
if you've got the time to let it sit, then by all means, let it sit. But if you don't, get one of these uh, heating tools and drying tools. I love this thing. Works like a hot damn. <laughs> and dry your paint before you try to transfer your line drawings on. <laughs> I got and a good one for you. <laughs> oh, God. Now what? Uh, this is from Diana. She says, you use Ash Fulton like Frank's hot sauce. Yes. I put that <laughs> crap on everything. <laughs> <laughs> Renee has learned. <laughs> it is my go-to. Yes. It is my go-to. I think everybody has learned that it's your go-to. I think so, yes. I use Ash Fulton an awful lot. Mainly for aging and distressing. Yes. I Well, in most cases, people use uh, burnt umber for yeah. aging antiquing distressing and whatnot i've never cared for it i always found it made things look dirty it had a tendency to mute colors more than i wanted them to so i started using a schwaltum and i that's my go-to color i use it for toning all the time <laughs> tracy bleeds a schwaltum not quite but getting there. It's more of a crimson red <laughs> oh, no, no, like a... <gasps> what you bleed country red <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do. <laughs> Country red. My go-to red. I love it. So, um, I'm using a gray graphite for this. And, oh, my goodness. A brand new one. How the heck did that happen? I usually use it till there's no gray left on it. <laughs> You're using a brand new... A brand new piece of graphite. Wow. I know. I usually use it until it's transparent. <laughs> uh, oh, Patrick says, oh, by the way, I received a book for my birthday. Nice. It's called 1500 Color Mixing Recipes for Oil, Acrylic, and Watercolor. Wow. That'd be a handy uh, book to have. I hope it will help me understand colors better. I'm, ha I'm a happy camper. Good. Nice birthday gift. 150. 1500 color mixing recipes yep for oil acrylic and watercolor wow that's a title yep it is indeed why are you vibrating phone was it you vibrating or me it was me okay so i'm using my red gel to trace my line drawing on and there's lots of overlap in this like these branches and twigs overlap each other and intertwine with each other. Uh, but they don't need to be absolutely perfect. So, you know, just trace them on. Under and over, under and over. Makes them more interesting. Tony has two questions. Shoot. What exactly is toning? And is it, cha is it changing the tone of the color that is under the asphaltum? Yes, okay. that's exactly what it is. Bam. When you put a transparent layer of, um, in this case, I'm using asphaltum over top of another color, it changes its tone. So it either cools it off or warms it up or subdues it or enhances it. So it could be, you can tone with almost anything. But um, I've always used asphaltum because I like that more soft, subdued tone to when I'm painting. And Eschfaltum is the color that does that for me. Um, so it acts like putting a glaze over top of another color. It's when I use Eschfaltum over top of Bahama Blue, it gives it a soft greenish cast without losing the blue, if you understand what I'm getting at. So. Now, I had somebody point out that these weren't actually realistic orchids. No, they're not. <laughs> they really are not. Um, they're a Caleopsis. And they are not a realistic version of it. Where can I find Ashfaltum? Ashfaltum um, Hobby Lobby does stock it. People always look for it with the browns. It's in, in with the burnt umber and the raw siennas down at the bottom of the rack. Um, Pinecraft stocks it. MaureenBaker.com stocks it. Um, some Home Depot, I know the Home Depot website had it at one point. Hmm. 
So I'm just going to quickly get this. I should actually check to make sure that it's transferring because, oh, we're good. Okay. Oh, it's just, it's a fresh surface. So you never know. Sometimes it wants to and sometimes it doesn't. <laughs> Decorart carries it. Yeah, Decorart.com carries it. <laughs> um, and if you're in Canada, um, you can get it through stockade.com or .ca, sorry, and uh, Country Bear and uh, Delta Arts and Crafts. There you go. A whole bunch. So um, Delta is based in Edmonton. Uh, great company. I've, I have ordered on numerous occasions from them. Their service has been fantastic. Pinecraft? Pinecraft is based in the U.S. Uh, I believe it's pinecraft.com. They stock it. Hmm. Used to be Hofcraft, but Hofcraft closed their doors. And these folks are just retiring, that's all. Uh, I heard we can now pre-order the new colors from yes. CD Wood and Pinecraft. Yes, uh, Cupboard Distributing has the new colors, or will have them, I should say. They. Uh, Do you have them? I don't. What? No, I don't have any of the new colors yet. What? How, how is that possible? Well, actually, I'm wrong. I have one of the new colors. Oh, you have one of the new colors. I have one. I have Strawberry. Oh. It's the only one I have. Is it pinky? Yeah, it is. It's yeah. pinkish red. It's a beautiful color. Mm. I'm very excited. I want I want to play with the new colors. <laughs> now you'll get them soon enough. Soon enough, yep. Yeah. It's never soon enough. We all want them the minute they talk about them, but, um, you know. Okay, I think, I think I was wrong. If you're going to paint with Tracy, you're going to need more than one bottle of Eschwaltum. Yeah. <laughs> yep. I'm down to, I think, one. One or two. I just opened a new one the other day. I'm also uh... almost out of warm white, so... Which is another color I use a lot. Okay, so I have... Missed a line. Who knew? Just go back and I double check to make sure I've got everything. Looks good. I think I have everything traced on. Just, uh, love this. I always double check because I'm scatterbrained sometimes. But uh, I do like using that red pen because I can see where I've been. And then it's a quick glance. And then a double check over here. And I just realized I missed one. That's quite the shipping cost. Shipping can be very expensive. Fifty-four dollars to get paint to Patrick from CD Wood. Yeah, cost us about the same to get it here. Fifty-four bucks. Yeah. That's just. I fortunately though, and this is something I find interesting. If I am shipping a box from the U.S. to Canada, it's expensive. Yeah. And and I understand it. It's it is what it is. It costs a lot to get things across the border. Um, but it's actually cheaper for me to send a box to Patrick than it is for somebody in the U.S. to send a box to Patrick. Uh, yeah. So, Patrick, if there's something that you really need, you know that I'm sending a, a little box your way anyway. Uh, don't hesitate. Let me know what you're looking for. If I can get it for you, I'd be more than happy to throw it in the box. I know how hard it is sometimes to get the supplies you want and need. So let me know if I can help you out. I will absolutely do that. Especially in Europe. Yeah. So I have my line drawings on. This part's really fun because it's it's very relaxed. We don't have to work hard to do this next part. And we're going to do that with a little bit of asphaltum. Surprise, surprise. And a rigger if I can find one. There we go. I got my rigger. So I've got a rigger and some asphaltum. And I'm going to put a little bit of glaze in my brush. I do like my Joe Sonia's, my fast dry glaze. And I'm going to thin out some asphaltum because I want this to really move smoothly. So I've got it thinned out and I'm going to, I just follow the general shape of what you've traced on for these branches and twigs. 
because I want this to look have a bit more of an organic feel to it. So I don't want it to look and feel structured or heavily structured. So I'm going to just use a little bit of pressure on the brush. And it's just lay it in, move the brush up and down as you go so that you get thicker spots and thinner spots like so. And then when it gets close to the edge of the flower, just paint it in a little bit. Now, I like using this method because you don't get this solid, heavy painted appearance. It doesn't look toll painted. It, it feels very smooth and more natural. And so I'm going to grab my brush. I'm going to do the same thing where they overlap. So we want thick, thin, irregular lines. Neatness doesn't count. Perfection is to be avoided at all costs. And that's just a super easy way to do these. Again, it just feels a bit more organic. And because you're pulling it in one long stroke, it doesn't come off feeling like it's been just filled in. So I do it in strokes like this because it gives us that wood look. And we're going to shade and highlight this. So it doesn't, don't worry too much about getting them absolutely perfect because it really is not a big deal. And then when you come out to some of these finer ones, make sure they branch off a little bit so that we have tweaks like so. There we go. So these little lines, these little twigs that we're putting in here, they will look much better than they do right now. Especially once we put some highlighting in, we put a little bit of shading in, it'll take on a different look entirely. There we go. So we have branches and twigs. I, I like seeing things look a little less structured. I find that if, if I did this and just painted in that space, it tends to look a little heavy handed. So if you just stroke it in and let the brush do the work, you're going to find that it has a bit more of an organic feel and it looks less um, contrived. So we're going to let this dry. And then we're going to use a warm white to base in our flowers. I like warm white. And the other nice thing is that we can come back in it a little bit and we're going to start shading a little bit in and around all of these flowers just to lift them off the surface. What I'm going to do is base coat these first. And these are not perfect. Mm. What? Mm. Uh, cat, cat McDonald. Oh, sorry. Mm. You had a mouthful. I had a mouthful. Cat McDonald. I'm working on Christmas ornaments for gifts this year. Nice. 
Does Tracy have any new patterns for ornaments? I actually do have a few things coming up. Uh oh. <laughs> I was trying to think of. I've had skulls on the brain. I'll admit it. <laughs> I, and somebody has been bugging that, me. That's fine to... for our Christmas. That, <laughs> Other true. people's Christmases would look at it and be you like, know, ah. Really? No. Yeah. Anyway, I. Um, Christmas skull. I, <laughs> I've been trying to think up a Christmas skull and it just doesn't work. I can't make it work. Um, but I've been playing with some ornament ideas for Halloween and whatnot. But of course, I always end up coming back down to Christmas because I love Christmas. So um, I'm working on another set of chickadees because I loved painting those. My Renee, not my Renee's favorite bird, I might add, but. Um, because they're noisy. <laughs> oh, chickadees. I hate the little buggers. Um, but I am working on another set of chickadees because I just love them. I think they're so cute for the holidays. So, yep, working on another set of those. And I'm working on another set of Santa Claus ornaments because I just, I love Santa Claus. <laughs> Edward needs coffee. Somebody say gorgeous. There you go. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> You do know you can drink all by yourself. <laughs> Don't need our permission or encouragement. So I'm basing these orchids with some warm white. <laughs> and then there's this little bit right here. Sort of an inverted triangle with rounded corners. Now, when I'm base coating these, I follow the shape of the petal. It's more out of habit, but it also works in your favor, especially when you're adding shading and whatnot to flowers. If you fill it following the shape of the flower, any brush marks are going to be directional. So they're going to follow the shape of the flower. So when you add shading and whatnot to it, it makes a big difference on how well that shading works. And if you create a little bit of texture that follows the petal, those shadings are going to follow that texture. So you'll end up with a, a, something a bit more realistic. So I'm using warm white. This is my least favorite part of painting, is base coating. I want to get oh. to the fun stuff. I think we're all like that. Christmas skulls. I'm trying to think of how to incorporate Christmas skulls. Well, people are, you know, everybody's first thought is, put a Santa hat on a skull. No. No. <laughs> it's been done to <gasps> death. You mm. know the traditional Christmas lights, that shape? Yes. You make the skull the receptacle, <laughs> so they're holding the the bulb in the mouth, uh -huh. and then you have a string of them. Okay. <laughs> you have a string of those lights, but the skull is the where the light gets screwed into. Ah, okay. You know what I'm saying? Uh huh. So the skull's holding it by the it. Yep, teeth. I get it. Yeah. <laughs> and then you have your greens, your reds, your golds. Well, I, I had a thought the other day. I wanted to do another skull cupcake. <laughs> yes. <laughs> she takes cute things and then... Makes them creepy. Makes them <laughs> creepy with skulls. I love it. Yeah. Well, I did a cupcake a number of years ago. Um, it was on a plate. And the plate had cherries, you know, the, the pairs of cherries, whatnot. And then it had a cupcake in the middle of it. And the cupcake was a skull. Mm, oh. Are you going to do anything 4th of July for us Americans? Uh, I'd love to. I, uh, again, it comes back to the skull thing. <laughs> I, um, uh, I did a piece a few years ago, um, that was for the 4th of July and it was a skull with roses and whatnot. And, but the color palette is strictly 4th of July. 
not, and I know that not everybody fully appreciates the skulls, <laughs> but uh, I have fun with it. But yeah, I should do something for the Fourth of July. I just it's a great color palette, you know, the the red, white, and blue. And we got that new star stencil that would be fun to work with. There you go. This is. I get all kinds of neat toys now. <laughs> What's the difference between traditional burnt umber and burnt umber? Um, traditional burnt umber is going to be a bit more red and a bit more opaque. I'm a big fan of the uh, of the traditional one. I the tone of it is very very nice, but it is a bit more red. Is the skull cupcake available on your website? It is not, but I could certainly get it up there. It's an older pattern, but uh, yeah, we could certainly put it up there for you if you want it. Do you guys want the skull cup on the website? It is an old. I'm gonna make it a poll. Give me a second. <laughs> I can do that. He on just here. wants to play now. I can do that. <laughs> I can do stuff. So. You can see I am not using up a ton of effort to base coat because I honestly, I don't think it's, it makes that much of a difference. I'm just missing a piece here. <laughs> Sheila Landry, I have that pattern. <laughs> I, I'm kind of obsessed with skulls. I just haven't done much with it lately. Um... There we go. Again, it's also a niche thing. There's not a lot of people that really love them like I do. There you go. Um, I know Kimish does. <laughs> Kimish, if you're watching, sweetie, I know that you appreciate my skulls. And we're already off to a whopping 75%. Yes. Okay. Then I guess I better get that up there today then. <laughs> I'll let it it's run It's a, a fun one. And it's it's it kind of has that um traditional tattoo type appearance to it <laughs> i had it out a little while ago mm -hmm. i don't know what i did with it so i'm just going to go back in i got a couple of the things just to touch up not quite opaque enough on a couple of spots here and this is just these are just fun to paint they're not as i said these are not super realistic orchids and they weren't intended to be this is a home decor type uh, piece is there a list available that shows your discount codes where that can be used um there is actually a discount code right on the website if you're looking for i'm thinking like other websites Oh, I had a few people ask me about um, Amazon. I don't have a discount code for Amazon. Um, Tracy10 for painting with Deb. I think it is. Uh, for the brush guys, it's uh, Tracy M. Yep. I don't have one right now for Sandy's website, I don't think. Skull Christmas cookies. Ooh, that's a good idea. <laughs> I like that. That oh. would be so cute. A sugar skull with holly. <laughs> I love it. There you go. Yeah. You're giving her ideas. Yep, my brain's going now. You're welcome. What? No cupcake. Do you have a coupon code for DecoArt? I don't, no. Yeah. Um, I do have a, what do you call that? Affiliate link. I have an affiliate link, um, but that doesn't help you. <laughs> <laughs> that helps me, but it doesn't help you. Um, and I often forget to use it, so... Uh-oh. What? Sheila Landry saying, I'll cut the skulls any shape you need. Oh. <laughs> Actually, she sent me a gorgeous plate. 
Oh, yeah. And that's what I was thinking of doing the cupcake on because she's got this amazing plate. <laughs> and it would just be perfect. Do you have a coupon code for CD Wood? I do not. No. Reindeer skulls? Oh. <laughs> oh, my God. That would be awesome. I've done ravens. Why not reindeer? That's right, too. You did a raven skull. Oh, who was it? One of the girls posted. Um, She painted the uh, raven skull bag. And she did an awesome job of it. It was really, really cool. <laughs> I get on little burns every once in a while and have to paint skulls. And I've been wanting to paint skulls for the last little bit. Okay, <laughs> so we ended the poll. And it is a whopping 86% yes. Okay, so I guess I better get that up there with that. So the skull cupcake will most likely end up on the website. Yeah. And I hear a motorcycle pulling in. Yeah. That was an interesting experience. Um, I'm all for the rain. reindeer skull with a red nose. <laughs> that would be cute. Like a clown's nose? No. Like a wrecked Rudy. <laughs> <laughs> Don't drink and drive. Don't drink and drive. <laughs> <laughs> or fly. Yeah, don't drink and fly. Um, last week... My husband took his motorcycle out for a ride, and um, on his way home, his bike quit, oh, yeah. and he broke down on the edge of the yeah. highway, not far from home, I might add. It was like less than less than two kilometers, mm -hmm. and um, he was there for what maybe ten minutes, and five people pulled over to see if he was okay, if he needed any help. And um, uh, and at least eight or nine people signaled to turn in that he waved off. But it uh, gives you an idea of what kind of village we live in when half the population decides, like, you okay? <laughs> Do you need help? <laughs> yeah, they're awesome. So, yeah, our little village. Nice, quiet little place, but we have great neighbors here. Uh, do you have the skull with the cards bag? No, we don't have any of those in right now. No? No. The uh, interesting thing, the company that manufactures them for us is uh, based in uh, southern China and uh, uh, have not been able to get anything from them for quite a while. So just to, I mean, we were lucky to get one shipment in during COVID. So, but so, uh, we have a strange, they have a strange feeling that there's going to be a skull in the future. There is going to be a skull in the future. <laughs> in the very near future, me thinks. Do you have a raven skull pattern? I do. Actually. Is it on the website? It is. Dun, dun. Go check it out. Yeah, I do have a raven skull pattern, and it's on a framed piece with a uh, what looks like a wrought iron frame. I was on my break yesterday. Yeah. And I was flipping through Instagram, and I stumbled across a jeweler. Oh, cool. I'm, I'm fascinated with both uh, stainless steel and silver jewelers mm -hmm. right now. Because, one, I want to learn how to do that. that would, <laughs> I think that would be cool because I have ideas. Do you? I just don't know how to. As long in... as they don't involve taking over the world, we'll be good. Yeah, I'm No, I'm <laughs> taking over the world. Just I have ideas to make, like, rings and pendants. Yeah. And some of the things I saw on this website, I was like, oh, that would be cool to make. <laughs> and one of them does nothing but skulls. <gasps> cool. And it's all sterling silver jewelry. Nice. So pendants, rings, cufflinks, earrings. Yeah. Some of my favorite so pieces. There was dog skulls, coyote skulls, bear Ooh, skulls. Cool. Like you name it, he had a skull for it. <laughs> and it was hmm. even domestic cat. Oh, cool. That'd be neat. As earrings. So a skull. Uh, uh, cat skull for each ear. Neat. I'm just going to... I'm just looking for something here. Um, Ooh, what's this? Yeah. <laughs> skulls. Skulls, skulls, skulls. 
<laughs> I like skulls. And I thought my first tattoo was going to be a skull. Yeah. But I changed my mind. My next one is. <laughs> <laughs> I have a design in my mind already for my next one. Oh, yeah. And sadly, I don't think it's going to be the traditional mom tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hurt. <laughs> oh, no, I still plan on getting that. But my next one, I think, is going to be the four dogs that I worked with. Oh, yeah. That would not be a bad idea. Yeah. So there was Ammo. Mm -hmm. Ammo the Mal. Mm -hmm. There was Tick and Talk. Yep. I want to put them into one tattoo, so I have an idea to have <laughs> uh, both their, like, just standard paw prints mm -hmm. with the... Uh, thin blue line go running through them oh yeah and then their name tick and talk yeah and ammo would be ammo and then his paw with the thin blue line and maybe the like a little shield police shield and then my favorite guy I, was uh bail oh. <laughs> yes the one we called new guy for so long yeah yeah Bail. Bail. Lord and of Destruction. Lord of Destruction was a good name for him. <laughs> so Bail, he got selected to do search and rescue. Yeah. Of all things. Yeah. Which was it? Was it Tick or Talk, the one that was the escape artist? Uh, or was that Bail? That was another. Was that another one? Yeah. I don't, that, I don't remember the name of that one. But that one would every once in a while escape her kennel and come say hi in the, the break room and be like <laughs> what are you doing out <laughs> yeah so she's figured out how to open the kennel get across the play field yep and open the break room door yeah entirely too smart for her own yeah. good oh they're good so yeah tick and talk are both bomb dogs <laughs> yeah but they're in separate units now tick and talk bomb dogs yeah Oddly appropriate. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ammo is a pol police takedown dog. <laughs> so I have to step away from the table for a moment, guys. I will entertain you. Break. So he's going to entertain you. Good luck with that. <laughs> I'll be right back. What do we got? Who do we have here? Do, do. Yeah, it's a brush holder at CD Wood that needs a Tracy pattern. Uh oh. I'm gonna have to tell her when she gets home or gets back. Hello, I see you from Chile. Oh, welcome. Spin for a prize? Not a bad idea. That is not a bad idea at all. Give me one second. Okay. Uh, copy, paste. Pasting. There we go. Yeah, empty chair. <laughs> End of shameless self-promotion. <laughs> I've never won a prize. Oh, maybe you will. <laughs> we we decided to spin for a prize while you were away. Oh, okay. So we're just in the midst of spinning right now. Alrighty. So. <laughs> oh, okay. Maybe not. What happened? I don't know. It did things. It did things? Yep. There you go. So we got a... Brenda Sawyer. Nice. Congratulations to Brenda Sawyer. Where'd my Sharpie go? It's in my skull. Yes. <laughs> I have skulls everywhere. <laughs> There's a human skull jar sitting next to Renee's computer that holds pens and markers. <laughs> yeah, Brenda Sawyer. 
So you got to go to the website, hit the speech bubble, and send us a message with all your information. Yep, speech bubble is in the lower right-hand corner on the homepage of the website. So I'm pretty sure we have Brenda Sawyer's shipping information. Uh, maybe. My nose is so itchy. Uh, should we do one more? Sure. Yeah? Yeah. And then we'll get into painting these flowers. Sorry about that, guys. Needed to take a little break. <laughs> Mother Nature must have her way. It's not spinning. Jan. It just says Jan. That. I get. Jan. Nado. Jan Nado? I think it's. Oh, I think so. You're there. Jan. You're going to have to contact us if you see this. <laughs> yep. I just copy paste, so if you're watching. Yep. If you want to get in on those drawings, you have to hit that uh, share button. I think I have seen a Jan in there before. Yes. It's funny because I want to say it's Jackie Nadeau, but I know that that's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> because Jackie Nadeau lives in Quebec, so. Yeah. yeah. All right. Back to... <laughs> back to painting. Back to painting. So um, we're going to, and I know that this all looks really unfinished we're going to um, start by shading all of these petals and i'm using um, a little bit of boysenberry pink for this and i thin it out i tend to not to use the colors full strength i like to thin them out a little bit and we're going to shade in behind like so and into these little sections here and it's almost a U shape or a C shaped float, and you're going to walk it out because we There's want. Jan. Yeah. And Jad's, Jan says, "I won last month. Please draw another name so somebody else can win." Oh, nice. You know what, Jan? Well, that's very sweet. That Thank is you. Very sweet of you. And we will do that right now. Yeah. Once I get my. <laughs> He's trying to get his wheel back up. It's working. Okay, so that means we spin again. Very nice, very <laughs> generous. Everybody's saying, take it and run, Jan. Take it and run. <laughs> <laughs> and we got Cynthia Hughes. Nice. With a C. Cynthia Hughes. Cynthia Hughes, if you're still there and still watching you can thank jan she uh she let you win so i'm just using Layers. like i said weak floats a small amount of color lots of water or lots of glaze on my brush and I float in towards the center of the flower. I want to leave the lighter values towards the outside edge. And I want the darker values in towards the center of the flower. Just like that. And they are going to look pretty sketchy for a little while. So this is not... Um, neat and tidy, pretty, delicate floats. Just laying some color in there. And we're separating all of these petals. Just like that. And this gives the flowers a very subtle pink tone. Just like that. You use water and glaze? You can use water or glaze. I use glaze. Okay. 
If you cannot get your hands on some of that Josonia's glaze, then just use the water. It will work. And I know it looks a little sloppy at this point. That's okay, too. <laughs> Don Lavelle says, I have these flowers tattooed on my arm. <gasps> Just wish they looked as good as yours. Oh, my. <laughs> <laughs> so these little buds up here get that same treatment. I'm just going at the top of the bud. I'm going to give it just a little flow to that same boysenberry pink. Now, this piece actually works up very quickly. Because when this is dry, I'm going to do that again. I'm going to use a little bit of, um, rinse out my brush here. I'm going to use a little bit of the um, boysenberry pink. Again, only I'm going to place it just in this one spot, very close in. I want that... I should have left that alone, but now I've made a mess of it. I'm going to grab my... I'm going to dry this real quick before I do this again. Honestly. Some days the lights are on and nobody's home. <laughs> uh, thankfully, just take a damp brush, brush over it. It'll reactivate a little bit, and then you can take it off. Did when I you make just... a goof like that... Did you see what Lillian Davis just said? No. Uh, no, that was a question I was just reading out loud. Oh, okay. What did she say? We're going for that. Renee, I just shared, so make sure to add my name for the next giveaway. <laughs> okay. Uh, funny thing is, yeah, your name's there. Yep. It's already on the list. Lillian Davis, you're between Jenny Mullins and Jan, <laughs> who just won. <laughs> But was gracious enough to. That was a very generous thing to do. Yes, it was. So, you're on there. So I um, I forgot to put my float on this little triangle piece down here. Got so excited about these flowers and fixing my boo-boo that I forgot about this little piece down here. So I've got a little shadow of that boysenberry pink on the lower left side of that little bit at the bottom. Now we have an orangey yellow showing through in the background. You can take a little bit of your saffron yellow in here in that very center. I like to just make it a little darker in there. And you'll see why in a minute. <laughs> Jan says to everyone, you are making my heart warm. Thanks. <laughs> it's exciting to, to get those packages. Yep. Oh, I bet it is. So I've got all of my shading in place and I want to deepen it at the very center of the flower in the tightest area here. And I'm using a float of the berry cobbler. And again, I don't use these colors full strength. And I just want that little shadow in here. A little bit darker. In towards the deepest part of that flower is where I'm going to put that float. It is not full strength. I don't want to use that color full strength because it is very strong. And I'll, I know I do this a lot. I use very strong colors and then use them very transparent. So you have to thin them out quite a bit. But this is your ultimate shading color. This is what's going to give everything that depth that we want in those tight little areas, those deep areas of the flower. There we go. And again, don't worry about getting these absolutely perfect. It doesn't matter. Just want to get a little color in there. There we go. This 
such a pretty color. I just goofed here. I'm going to take my, there. I'm just going to soften that with a mop. I actually had too much water in my brush and I ended up with a, a messy puddle and then it left me with a very hard edge. So I just softened it a little with that mop brush. Now, again, these flowers are not going to look really perfect. That's okay. Because we have still have a few steps to do before we get to where we want to be. So I deepen that float. I love this berry cobbler. It's a uh, purplish pink. It's got a little tone of purple to it. But it also gives you really nice shading, especially over pinks. It's a great shading color for pink. And these flowers are going to end up looking more white than pink by the time we're done. But they are going to have that little bit of pink undertone. So there we go. So I have a little bit of that berry cobbler. I want to deepen the upper side, upper left side of that little bud there. Same here. It's a weak float. I don't have a lot of color in this brush. There we go. There we go. So I've got all of that pink in. I'm going to deepen that shadow on that little white bit in the center of the flower. And then we are going to use a small round brush for this. A number four or a number two will do just fine for this next little bit. If I can find my number two. There we go. That will do. And we're going to take that berry cobbler. And there's two little teardrops, reverse teardrops, right here. And we're going to stroke those in with that berry cobbler. Just like that. And it's just a comma stroke on either side of the center of that flower. So we have the opening. I'm going to dry that because the way my luck has been going this week, I will more than likely stick my finger in it and smear it all over the place because I've done that twice this week working on pieces. Um, I'm doing a um, Christmas in July live class for um, Cindy Harrison and her group uh, around uh, mid-July sometime and I was finishing off my piece for that class the other day and... I almost had it finished and I, it was so ugly by the time I was done with it. I was like, no, I have one day to get this submission in. I had to completely repaint it. I chose a completely different color palette because it was just, no, I didn't like it. So in the process of, of repainting it, um, I was in such a hurry to do something and I should never be in that much of a hurry, but I was in such a hurry um, doing something that um, I didn't take the time to dry some paint and I ended up smearing wet paint onto dry paint and then I had to get it off and then I ended up having to repaint that whole section because I just completely messed it up and entirely my own doing for being too in too much of a hurry to get something done um, but also wanting to make sure I made, met my deadline um, I ended up being a little bit late which I dislike actively, but um, 
I managed to get it done, but not without making a mess of it a couple of times because I was in too much of a hurry. So, it serves me right for uh, leaving it too late. But So, I have this little spot done. I want to um, add a little shadow inside the mouth of that orchid right in here. I'm going to take a little of that berry cobbler and I'm just going to put a little float in the mouth of the orchid right there. It's just a little one. It's just going to give the mouth of that orchid a little depth. That's all it's going to do. And the berry cobbler over top of all of that orange and yellow is just awesome. It's a great color for that. So I have all of that shading done. I've done the center of my orchid. I've done the petals have been shaded and then deepened. I've done that with the berry cobbler. So uh, what I need to do now is um, I need to subdue some of this color a little bit. So I'm going to pick up a small amount of Ishvaltum. And this is very thin. I have heavily thinned this color. I just want to deepen a couple of spots. And those spots are right there. right up against the center of the flower and in here. All it does is just add a little more depth in there, but it doesn't drastically change the color. It just deepens it a little bit. And I like that little bit in there. It does help give it a little more darkness without making it really heavy looking, which is I'm constantly trying to avoid that heavy appearance. And so that weak float of Ishvaltum in there makes a big difference. It just deepens colors enough to give it a little value change, which is all I'm looking for for this. Just a little value change, like so. Okay. So now I want to come back to this, all of this wood, all of these branches and whatnot before we start adding highlights and everything to these orchids because those highlights are going to uh, they're going to change a few things so I'm going to pull a little bit of lamp black onto my palette it's very pink it is very pink it won't be for long though I promise <laughs> and we're going to oh, what did I miss? load up this angular with a little bit of lamp black And we're going to shade down the left side of all of these twigs. Now I'm just using the tip of my brush and I'm just laying it onto that left side. It's just a weak float of lamp black. Oh, Paula is wondering where she could find information on Christmas in July. Um, it will be posted soon on uh, the uh, on Cindy Harrison's uh, group and um, it will also as soon as it's available for registration it will also be posted on my page so I will let you know let's see what else what what else did I miss so let's was, float in a was, nice little shadow here I was making sure dad's bike running is is good the signal lights don't work though <laughs> of course not Completely unrelated to the problem with the bike, too. Yeah. Which is, doesn't surprise me. <laughs> we didn't mess with the electrical system at all. Yep. So, makes me wonder. Uh, da, 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 da. The gods are testing I, him. I think he may have broke a cable while he was trying to put it back together or something. It could have been. But, who knows? It is, it's rather, relatively minor. Grandbaby is off to the gr Grammy hubby. Hubby is working until 9.30 this evening. <laughs> Oh, that's Karen. So I'm shading underneath, up against some of these lines, underneath the flowers, just a little float of lamp black to separate all of those twigs, all of those branches, I should say. <laughs> Reminds me of an Amish saying, the hurrier I go, the behinder I get. 
Yep. That one is like my motto. <laughs> <laughs> Slow down. Yep. Chill. Chill Enjoy out. the vibes, man. <laughs> so little float just to separate all of these from the petals, lift them off the surface, set them back from each other too. That's I like my little three eighths angle for this because it will get into those little small areas without too much difficulty. I believe the black is thinned. It is. You do have to thin out the slant black because it's strong and you don't want a solid bar of black separating these things. <laughs> it is just a float and you want to get it right up against the edge of the petals. I say what? Is there no script? There's no text in it this There's time. There's no lettering? <laughs> no lettering. What? <laughs> I know. It's shocking. My. Mind good? It was interesting. Um, I found that funny <laughs> the other day that um, I was on... I forget which group it was. It doesn't really matter anyway. It wasn't my group. Um, but somebody had commented that everything I paint has lettering in it. And and yeah, a whole, lately it seems like everything has had lettering in it. Oh my God, it's awake. So I... Uh-oh. Uh it's awake? Yes, it's awake. Miss Soot is awake. Who is she staring at, I wonder? Uh, probably ladybugs. I don't know. There's... Miss Soot. Miss Soot. You were drooling, weren't you? <laughs> she was asleep. <laughs> Hi. Our Miss yeah, Soot is our senior citizen. Oh my god. Yeah, you were drooling. Okay. You doing okay? <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Miss Soot is our fourteen year old feline. If you are not familiar with her, she's a piece of work. What's she doing? You're purring up a storm. So I'm almost done with this shading. I I like to have it all to the left side. So we do have to add a highlight to our twigs here just to give them a little extra i'm going to do that with a little bit of saffron yellow um, the reason i'm using the yellow is just because it reflects this background and i don't want a really bright highlight i just want a little bit so i'm pulling my highlight just in from the edge slightly and on the upper right so directly opposite of the shading and it doesn't have to be perfect but it does uh, just gives you a little bit of a light impact point on these branches so that they're not just you know a stroked in piece but they do not have to be perfect but that little bit of saffron yellow does make a difference on these twigs. I can't put her down. Why? Oh, maybe I can now. Can I put you down now? <laughs> can you hear that, folks? Oh, they can. Oh my gosh. She was getting cuddles. Don't. <coughs> yeah, don't don't rub your face up against that. Carry on your merry way. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> She rattles the cameras. <laughs> so you can see that that little bit of yellow pops those branches. Now they've got a little bit more dimension. No, don't do it. Don't do it. Too late. You brat. She did that on purpose. She came back to do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. 
So I do like how this little bit of yellow, and it is just a little, it gives you a little bit of a, a punch of light on these branches. Are we going upstairs? And if you feel it needs more, by all means, you can adjust that color a little bit, put a little bit more on. I like that it shows off the texture of these branches. Keep going. There we go. So we have highlights in place. And it's super subtle. It's not an in-your-face highlight. I would not use um, a warm white on there because one, it would feel a little cold and it would also feel a little less natural and a little less organic, but it also wouldn't carry this color around. So I'm using that little bit of saffron yellow for the highlight instead because it grounds it and pulls all of those colors together. So our orchids um, are really looking pretty good. We're going to start with detailing these flowers a little bit. I'm going to use my 15 knot for this. And I'm going to pick up a little bit of that um, berry cobbler. And we're going to put tiny little dots in varying sizes, like so. Just a few in varying spots. Jessica Killerin just showed up. Yeah. She's here. So we have just a few little dots. Not too, too close together. They don't need to be perfect. And they are indicated in the line drawing. If you have a close look at the line drawing. You don't need to have a ton of them. But keep them small. You don't want them too big. I kind of like the idea of having a few bigger ones and then little tiny ones that sort of come off and out. Just so that they look a little more haphazard, I guess. And I do like to see some on all of the petals, but as long as you don't overdo it. Just keep them subtle. And don't forget to put a few on the little buds, like so. And I like them on the shaded side in particular. So to saying, don't tell me no. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's pretty much what she says all the time. She is the little diva in this house. And extremely talkative. <laughs> and then a few more. Like I said, I like to have the, a little bit of it on all of the petals. And I do like having them varying sizes so that they're not too, too big. So we have that part done. So now we have to um, stroke in a few little details like the, the branches connecting these buds. You can do that with a little bit of antique green or with plantation pine, or you can just do it with asphaltum. Um, I'm partial to using my plantation pine for that. There is no green in this piece, um, so I kind of want it a little bit, but it isn't really obvious, so it doesn't really matter, to be honest. Um, Tracy, do you think I could use your shading technique, the one for the stems, on middle distant trees, for example? Yes. Yes, absolutely. It, because it's not a hard and fast and... and really precise highlight. It's ideal for that kind of thing. So I've got branches connected. 
So the only thing we have left to do is to add some highlighting uh, to our flowers. And I'm going to do that in two stages. We're going to use a little bit of titanium white. Um, I'm going to the titanium white because one, it's cooler and it's going to give us that little punch of brightness without a really harsh contrast. So I'm going to use a little bit of titanium white and I'm going to take that out to the edge of my flowers. I want to really brighten those edges like so, especially where they overlap something. I like that contrast. So take it right out to the edge. Nice bright highlight. And the same at the tips of these little petals down at the bottom. I wanted to show you something. Remember I said you don't need to have that um, shading doesn't need to be neat and tidy and, and really perfect. This is why. So when I come back in with that highlight, it's going to overlap that pink and soften it. So it's not, you don't need to have that absolutely perfect highlight. It isn't necessary. And this little bit of titanium white is going to soften those boundaries a little bit and give you nice bright orchids. I like that this, you know, fixes a few subtle things. I like that little bit of white in there. Pretty, pretty. So we have one more set of highlights to put in and this I'm going to do with a rigger. And it has to do with these little flip overs and fold overs. And you're going to pick up some titanium white. You can do this with a liner, a small round or your rigger, whatever you're most comfortable with. And you're going to put a little comma stroke and then line it so that it comes out nice and fine to the edge of your petal. Hey, I just posted another po poll. Okay. Yeah. We'll see, we'll, we'll see what the, the community says on YouTube. Okay. In reference to... <laughs> <laughs> we'll see I'm afraid to ask so all of those little flip overs turnovers and and little details I'm having a heck of a time getting a point on this thing today just like that with the pole mm -hmm. um, it would be your choice for what to do whatever you want but we're, I'm asking, <laughs> uh, should we get mom to paint an animal portrait, i.e. wolf, cat, bear, but your For choice. For alive? For alive. Oh, that's, um, there's not nearly enough time for that, to no. be honest. Even something simple? Uh, Even if it's the just the focal point. Um, you know what to do eyes to do a nose to do whatever I could do like an ice and I but to do a portrait in a class no it'd take be, too long it well the prep would be mind-boggling I'd have to stage it out yeah so I, essentially I'd have to paint the whole the, thing four or five times yeah <laughs> no, so, I, I, it's not out of the question but not something I it would take a lot of planning to do it let's put it that way yeah. It would be an eight-hour live. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, I'm thinking it would be a long one. <laughs> so or I'm even just a pattern. They would be happy with. Oh, I'd be happy to do a pattern, but um, to do it as a live, I'd be. I think a little too much. Well, to do it in a two or three-hour live, yeah, it would be too much. But uh, again, it's like somebody said, it would be like an eight-hour. That'd be the type of thing it would take an all-day class. <laughs> <laughs> um, what if we did it at your pace? So we pre-record it. That's has possibilities. So we could do part one, part two, part yeah, three. Yeah, that would we could do that. But okay, so I've got. I would need more time off from work. <laughs> I would need more time. Yeah, true. So 
So I'm going to switch over to a liner because I am not having much luck with my round right now. But I'm using uh, a little bit of warm white and I'm going to put my little flip over in. It's just a little stroke. Comme ça. And little flip overs on these petals. And that is our final highlight on those flowers. Now I have a lot of graphite lines and whatnot that I need to clean up. And again, I seem to be ignoring, don't ask me why, I have a sudden aversion to the center of this flower. This little bit down here, remember this little, <laughs> little triangular shaped piece of this flower? I keep forgetting to detail it. I forgot to put the shadow in, now I'm forgetting to put the highlight in. So I put a float, just a little float of that titanium white on there. And now we're going to finish off those buds with just a stroke of titanium white. And this is super easy. I'm going to do this from the bottom. It's just a little comma stroke that goes here. So it's an 83% yes. <laughs> okay. So <laughs> what... So an aminal is a good idea is so what you're an, telling so me. So an animal. Aminal. Aminal. Okay, so I'm going to dry this. And then uh, we're going to add our final detail to this. Because this is such a super simple one, honestly. It's an easy paint. You can thank uh, Edward Hensley for me doing that idea. Okay. Yeah. So he can take either the credit or the blame as well. No, I'm not... I, I, <laughs> I give him partial blame because he put the idea in my head. Okay. Because he wants to paint a sloth. A sloth? A sloth. Okay. <laughs> I saw that and I went, well, I doubt we can get her to paint a sloth. <laughs> oh, there we go. Okay, so I'm using, this is my gold, my liquid gold opaque paint pen. And I love this part. I need to prime this puppy. Oops. And then I like to do this. I want to add a gold line that goes over the twig and then under the twig and then over and wraps around and goes under and then goes under and then over and then off the page. I want that little flash of gold in there. I love how this looks. And I'm going to do the same thing over here, coming from they underneath. can't see that. Mm -hmm. From underneath, over top, underneath, dot, over top, underneath. So I want that gold line to sort of pop up over here, go underneath. You're not in trouble, Edward. Oh, yes, he is. No, he's not. <laughs> no, I take the blame for this. Okay. This is my doing. <laughs> so I like this little bit of gold. I want to, you know, just add that little flash of metal in there. I just like it. It's a me thing. See, it's a pretty little detail. And you can do as much or as little as you want. So if you wanted to branch off of this one and wrap around this branch a bit just like so a dragon then you can have some fun with it so do we still have a giveaway yes we do still have we a have one more giveaway is that complete it is complete are you done i are done other than cleaning it up i have a few little things to clean up like graphite lines and whatnot when everything is completely dry, I will Put break out my um, Factus Black. The other thing I would, if you want to get into some really tight little details, I love this thing, you know, to clean up all those graphite lines without, you know, rubbing over everything. That's what this thing is grand for, is it cleans up all those little graphite lines really nicely. And so the accuracy, because it's such a fine point, it's phenomenal. Oh, Love this thing. I've seen my mother do cats. She does very nice cats. <laughs> I like cats. 
right now I'm obsessed with owls and birds. I'm going to be doing that raven. Well, those are very unique features, and there's a lot of focus on the eyes. Yes, because uh, that's... And you, you've always been good at doing eyeballs. Yeah, <laughs> eyeballs. Whether <laughs> embodied or disembodied. <laughs> well, I'm just... I'm obsessed with birds because of the textures. I think that's what gets me. Nah. I love the textures and the feathers and the contrast between those you know bright, shiny eyes and then all of that texture for the feathers but all right spin time spin time spin time <laughs> hey what's the ad for the day um surplus furniture and mattress warehouse <laughs> okay okay that's our ad for the Sur day <laughs> <laughs> and custom living room packages I, I i highlighted this name since she brought it up Watch this. See? Lillian Davis. <laughs> You're on there. Okay. Just so <laughs> she knows. Well, Renee's pretty good about keeping track of who's in the goes in the wheel. So You're all on there. Yep. We're spinning. I'm fascinated by some of the names that are on there. Some of them, they're just... You have to wonder what ethnicity some of them come from. Yeah. It's fascinating. Well, there's a few people from Chile, and we have Jackie Gibson. Jackie Gibson is our winner. Yes. Excellent. Wonderful. So, as I said, the uh, the giveaways for today, you've got a set of uh, Tombow Professional Drawing Pencils. They're very nice sets, a three-pencil set. And uh, you have a Dynasty Stencil Pro stencil brush coming your way as well, plus some other little swag and goodies that we like to throw in. Um, we're currently out of our little two-inch stencil giveaways. Um, yeah. There's been a delay from our manufacturer, so we are waiting on some of those. So unfortunately, any orders that are going out don't have a stencil in, but we do throw in other little goodies too. Yeah. So um, make sure that everybody gets something in that. Um this was a fun piece to paint today. I enjoyed this one. It's an older pattern, but uh, sometimes I get I like going back to some of the older designs that I've done and then just upgrade them a little bit, change up the color palettes, you know, just adjust things, make them a bit more um, contemporary, something that, you know, update them a little because co paint colors change on a regular basis and certain mediums or, or products are not available that were available. You know, all those years ago, 14 years ago. I cannot believe it's that old, but wow. <laughs> um, what was the name of the eraser you used? Um, I have two, my, my two favorites. This one is the Tombow Knock Eraser. I can't see it. Okay. Use camera. <laughs> this one here, I forgot where it was. Uh, this is the Tombow Knock Eraser. This one works like a mechanical pencil. So you can just put it out, you press down, you can push it back in. Uh, the other nice thing is that you can take this to a piece of sandpaper and sharpen it to a point. So if you want to get into some really tight details, this is a fantastic little tool, works great. It also doesn't damage your paint and it doesn't create shiny spots either. The other one that I use is this one. This is a Factus Black Eraser. This one's from General Pencil. I love this one because it does just that. It'll take off the graphite, it'll take off wax base, oil based, chalk based, any one of them easily without smearing and it also does not uh, create shiny spots on your acrylic paint it's fantastic for dark backgrounds because that's where that shiny shows up every single time so factus black and this uh, knock eraser from tombow i love this thing it's a fabulous little tool um, the other thing that I've been using a lot lately is my uh, my tombow mechanical pencil i just love that thing it's Phenomenal for drawing, for design work. It's just great. Um, so the pattern for this one, uh, we put it on sale this week because one, because it's an older pattern and two, I was so late getting everything done this week. And then having the power go out yesterday just compounded that problem. So um, I had far too many deadlines this week. <laughs> All of them landed. And you did it to yourself. And I did. Of course I did it to myself. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody sets my deadlines. I do that. I'm usually here to help out with some of the orders, um, but <laughs> my new position at work, kind of. Yeah. So I my uh, <laughs> <laughs> my, 
my work has been a little busy the last couple yeah. of weeks, but we're getting, I'm getting into a better routine. So, you know, I've handled it before. I can handle it again. Yes. Um, coming up this week, I think next Saturday, we're going to be painting a cupcake. <laughs> <laughs> Are we doing the skull cupcake? I think we're going to do the skull cupcake. So we're going to do the skull cupcake. I'll have that pattern up for you on Wednesday because it's already available. So um, I may make a few changes like surface and whatnot because I know that the manufacturer of the surface that was originally used is no longer in business. So, um, and I'm not sure where I can find it, but <laughs> I have a great substitute. Besides, really, I want to redo it. because Where do you get fun. Tombow mechanical pencils? Um, I have them on my website. I love my, my Tombow mechanical pencils. They're phenomenal. We got them in mint green and what pink? Uh, coral Some, pink. Coral pink. Yeah. Mint green. I, it's a great pencil. Just And it, you can get the leads for them anywhere. But the pencil itself, the quality is exceptional. It has a nice weight in it. So it actually is a very comfortable pencil to use. You can't miss me if I don't leave. That's kind of like saying, uh, I'm sorry I'm late. I didn't want to come. <laughs> <laughs> I saw somebody put that up there. It just killed me. I have um, the original pattern. Are there a lot of changes? Um, Mainly to the color palette. You're going to change the color palette a bit? Which? For the cupcake. Oh, for the cupcake. No, the color palette's going to be, I already read through it. No. Um, the color palette's going to remain the same. So, no, the, I think about the only change there will be will be um, me updating the line drawing and then um, updating the surface. That, that'll that be about it. Other than that, I think we're good. I think it'll be good. Everybody's th thanking you for the class. Well, thanks, guys. We appreciate you coming and watching every Saturday. Um, hopefully you got something out of this. I know it's an older design. Um but I think it's a lot of fun to, to go back and, and grab some of those older designs and then update them a little bit. Uh, for this one, it surprised me that this one doesn't look all that different from the original, even though I changed the color palette around. I did update the line drawing because the previous one was just needed it. <laughs> it's an older pattern. And uh, so I did update it a little bit. Uh, and then uh, because of that, we put it on sale. So we just didn't, I didn't have the... What are you twitching about? Uh, just got a headache coming. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. No, you're not. <laughs> I thought you were going to call me your headache. Uh, no. No? Not yet. Not yet? <laughs> I'm working on it, though. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. I already have a neurological disorder. I don't need another. Yeah, well, I'm working on it. <laughs> <laughs> Well, guys, that's it for us this week. Thank you again so much for coming in and joining us every Saturday. If you aren't already subscribed to my YouTube channel, please hit the big red subscribe button and uh, turn on your bell notifications so that you know whenever we add new video and when we go live. And uh, if you are not part of my membership group, please think about it. Come and join us. We have a lot of fun. We do a lot of different projects and challenges. And uh, then we have that, that class at the end of every month. And we have fun with that too. And to my members, uh, don't forget, Wednesday, we have a drawing for another one of, our, of those prizes. This week, the prize is a great little set of Skyscape Windsor Newton watercolors. It's a gorgeous little <laughs> travel set. Oh, my brain wasn't going there. Um, it's a gorgeous little travel set. So uh, make sure that uh, you watch either the Facebook page or the YouTube channel. Um, the community tab will uh, let you know who our winner is. We're going to be spinning the wheel every week for that. And then we have three amazing giveaways, um, little gifts to give away during our live class on the 28th. And uh, we have some beautiful wax seals the stamp that we use for doing that great wax seal so we have three of those to give away this month so that is it for us this week thanks again so much for joining us and we will see you next saturday same time same bat channel love you guys Mwah. please stay safe adam west <laughs> i'm adam Hui. i'm west <laughs>